Yeah. Here. I'm back? Yeah. Okay. So I, shall I start again with about the project? Okay, I don't know where, at what point I fell off, so I start again with about the project. Subtitle with about the project. Subtitle about the project. And I hear myself sometimes. Subtitle history caught in the act. So, um, so VPRO and the Dutch um, author Geert Mack joined forces again. We traveled through Europe. Uh, to give meaning to the history years of 1999 till 2020. And as you all know, these years are marked with crucial yeah. historical yes, events, yes. such as the Twin Tower attack, the uprise of terrorism, yes. um, an increase in migration, disastrous climate change, and for example, the Me Too movement. The main question that both television makers and writers, so we, were trying to answer was, is it possible to recognize history when you're still in the midst of it and nobody knows how it will end just now? Um, so this is uh, where we are now, of course, because with the corona crisis, you might say that we are all caught by history in the act in the whole of Europe. Um, so, we decided to uh, start in Europe schools, in line with the television series. Uh, and um, we produced an interactive education kits for students in grades 3, 4 and 5 for senior um, secondary education and for pre-university education. And we hope this project will contribute to forming opinions. European citizenship and media literacy, because this is all about learning history uh, by making your own documentary. So students are challenged and supported to create their own short document documentaries, and they do so by using our interactive toolkit, which includes history lesson tailored excerpts from the series, an instructive education literate assessment and seven tutorials uh -huh. to facilitate teachers and students in making short documentaries. But the best of it all is that it's a European exchange project. What? What? So VPRO and EuroCreo will connect every school that joins the program to a Europe. Um, and schools coming over from 30 countries already have joined us to create a one of a kind European exchange project in which students will film their own recent history and compare and discuss the outcome of the project together. Um, but enough talk by me. Let's have a look in the next page um, to a clip made by the students themselves. Can we go to the next page? Um, and I think we will share in the uh, chat, we will share the link of the video, so you can take a look at it. It's about two minutes, and then get back, and we wait, and then we continue. Enjoy. of a background noise so if uh, I see that it's because we there is a bit of a technical um, problem so if participants yeah there is a bit of a technical there is a bit of a background noise so please participants uh, we we did made a there is a problem that you have all microphone right uh, but we will ask you please to mute yourself. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I, I hope you. Okay, now it should be okay because nobody has microphone rights except the presenter, the host now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry for that action to, to, to mute everyone, but I think it was, uh, was necessary to be able to continue. Continue. Um, so Odette, thank you very much for uh, the introduction to the um, uh, to the project. Uh, I hope you've all seen the link to the introduction video. So it's really about making documentaries. It's very international. Uh, I would like to invite now Hadi as uh, one of the authors of Toolkit to uh, present the project with the learning outcomes and uh, to show the example of difficult history. Okay. Hi to everybody. Uh, I'm Marie Olive and as it was uh, before in one of the co-writers of the pedagogical kit for the Europe school. Yes. And this is the learning outcomes of the project. And that as you can see the approaching of a teaching of the European modern history in a very multi perspective way to encourage the participation between teachers and students around Europe, that is something that you do very well, need tuning. Sorry, we, we cannot hear you. If you can please repeat. Please speak on the microphone. Because we're, unfortunately, we face a lot of technical. Are you still in? Yes, now we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Yes. Okay. Okay. And can, and can you see the slide of education kit? Yes. Are you watching in Europe schools education kit? Do you want me to repeat the learning outcomes then? Yes? Okay. It's okay. Just continue. No. It's okay. Okay. So I, I told you, or I was trying to say that the learning outcomes of the project was to approach the teaching of modern European history from a more perspective way, a multi perspective way, to encourage the networking between teachers and students around Europe, something that Etwin knows very well, the develop of research skills of students and also the use of interviews as oral source, to learn how to edit and produce documentary and to develop their media literacy and also the ICT competence. Yes? It's okay?
Yes. Do you listen to me? Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, we go. Now, this is, is the education kit. The slide of education kit, please. The previous one. I'm trying to explain the education kit. Yeah. No, this is the previous one, please. One before. Yeah, this one. Okay. I was saying that these learning outcomes can be achieved using our education kit that are placed in the VPRO webpage. Yeah. If we can go, if we can go to the webpage, Can I have the permission to go to the web page, please? Yes. Okay. If I can't go to the web page, I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, you can. In the previous one, it was, I was saying that there are four education kits that, can you go up, please? I don't know. I can explain the slides if I don't see, if you can't see them. One before, here, yes, at least here. Okay, there are, there will be four education kits, even now there are only two. That is difficult history and migration, that they are the ones that have been using the piloting process. And if you have the opportunity of going to the web page later on, you can see that there are two versions for each kit. Here we have a student version and a teacher version. In the student version, the students will find everything that she or he needs to go into the project. Here you will find the handouts, the fact sheets, graphs, videos, tutorials, and everything. And step by step for doing the difficult history project in this case. And if you go to the teacher's version, the teacher's version has all the material that the students have, but also explanations about the objective, the material they need, and suggestions to the activities in class. Yeah. Also, you can download all the material of the lesson and all the videos so that you can use them offline in case there are problems on internet. Yes. Well, let's continue. Education key to research question. And this is more or less how the lessons, the structure of the lessons. All of you, as you know, they have to do some documentary in groups of four or six. And these documentaries have to answer to the research question, that is, how should we deal with difficult history of migration or climate change? And all the, uh, all the lessons have the same structure of four steps. The first step is introduction. The second one is to learn more about the project. The third one, the research and creation of the documentary. And the fourth one is the sharing of the videos and the last reflection. Continuing, if we continue to the next slide, thank you. Here you can see that this would be the previous one, please. Previous one, please. Slide number 12, please. Yeah, thank you. 12. Thank you. Uh, this would be like the presentation of the lesson where you can have the rationale and learning outcomes of difficult history. And in the next slide, step one, line number 13. Yes, okay. We will see the introduction. The introduction has two parts. The first part is the presentation of the project and the partner school. And the second part is the presentation of the topic. Here in the right part, 
you can see part of the, uh, the teacher's guide for this uh, uh, part one. Is a, you can see that there is an introduction, objective of the, of the lesson, the material and preparation you need, and also suggestion yeah, for each activity in the planning grid. In the presentation of the project, students uh, will watch the video that you have already watched about the project, so they know they are going to do a documentary in groups about a nowadays topic. Uh, for the presentation of the partner students, the idea is to have a first relation with other students from other European school. Yeah, because as you know, the motivation for students is increasing. If you are doing your project not only for the for the teacher and the classmate, but also for other students. Uh, to organize the partner students, there are two possibilities. You can uh, prepare or uh, connect with you are eating in a school that you already have, uh, decide the topic and organize this first contact after registering in the project. But in case the other uh, eating in a school doesn't want to take part on it or they don't have time or whatever, you can ask VPRO or Euroclear to try to find a partner school for you. And depending on the characteristic of the topic and your student age, or number of students even, they will try to find the perfect partner for you. So before starting to the project, the teachers that are interested in to take part on it, you will have already the par a partner school. And in this moment, when you start working with a student, you will have this first relation with the students, with the other students. Yes, can be an online meeting or can be a video that you record and send the others, etc. You know much better than me, all of those kind of possibilities of changing information. If we go to the next slide, yeah, is the second part of introduction. And in this second part, we introduce the topic to students. Uh, and also ask them to start reflecting about the inquiry question, how would they deal with, yeah? Uh, yeah, for example, for this activity, we have decided our suggestions, our suggestions are to discuss in class, in the whole group, about what difficult history is. But you don't have to go very deep because they will watch the starter video about difficult history. And after that, they will discuss the perspective of this difficult history and also the perspective of different protagonists. Yeah, this starter clip is based on the Bosnian conflict documentary that VPRO is broadcasting in the Netherlands as part of the In Europe series. Uh, let's try to watch the beginning of this one, please. Okay. Harry, when you would like to share your screen, please let me know and we can share your screen and show users the various elements. Yeah, we'll do it in the in slide 14. 14, I think, in the character cast. 16, sorry, 16. Okay, so I am now stop sharing uh, the presentation and all our learners, please pay attention uh, to the screen because Harry will share her screen and we'll be able to see the later. Harry, the floor is yours. Please click on share my screen. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes, we can, can see the character character card. Yes. Okay. See okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, after presenting the topic and the project, we will go to step two, and step two start uh, knowing more about the context of the project. Yeah. And uh, the project, sorry, no, the topic. In this case, is the difficult history. And the, the difficult history that we have chosen as a sample is Bosnian conflict. For that, we have different activities to work more on the historical context of Bosnian conflict and also more samples. Uh, more samples of difficult histories that the students will analyze. For going further in the Bosnian conflict, we have, we have created these character cards that are the protagonist of the video, that in this case are four. The Nikola Kurizda, who is a young man that wants to know more about the Bosnian conflict because nobody has told him anything, even in school. We have also his mother, the Sanka, that never has told about that and doesn't want to talk about that. We had Cricket Basic, that is the person of the shovel on the beginning, in the beginning of the video, that he wants to know where his family is buried, but nobody wants to tell him. And there are also the inhabitants of Prihedor that don't want to talk at all about the Bosnian conflict, about the events that happened there in their town. So, what are the students going to do? They will go into shed the character cards in groups of four so that each student will have one of them and they will analyze what is written here and they will try to understand how or why they did as they did okay? which is the perspective that they uh, that they took in that moment they will try to analyze individually the perspective of their character and then they will match again in groups so that they can talk they can have kind of discussion to share the perspectives of the characters. We have this kind of uh, activities, uh, sorry, this kind of cards in each lesson. And usually, as in here, most of the characters are from the video clip, not always, because the idea is to have as much perspective as possible. But if we go back to also to try to see more sources, we have here also another source that we have created, that is the timeline of Yukos Labor. This is the timeline, a tiki-toki timeline, that we have created to make students understand better the Bosnian conflict. Yeah? And you can see there are different events that happen and the explanation of each event. The, the, so students can analyze the causes and the consequences of the Bosnian conflict is here. We have prepared also more chat and more uh, handouts for them uh, to understand the historical perspective. That is the objective of this part one or step two. Okay, uh, I finished sharing the screen. So you can go out. Can you take me out, please? Yes? Yes, I'm doing it now. So, okay, excellent. Uh, Harry, I uh, requested control of the screen. If, if you can please yeah. grant, grant me uh, control to the screen, thank you. Yeah, I did. So it. that was indeed a very interesting uh, example, and you showed us very clearly. Yeah, and you showed us very clearly. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's see. Just a second. We're bringing up the presentation again. And while, 
well, if it's opening, maybe it, it's worthwhile, Harry, if you can share in the chat the link of all the excellent resources you just showed us. So participants can already note this, uh, open it maybe in another tab, and uh, already note it and save it in their favorites so they can go back afterwards and use these resources and take a look, a deeper look, and this Wait for the while we wait for the to be uploaded. Okay, so here we go again. We're here. Thank you very much, Hari, for sharing the direct link to what you have presented. <laughs> the microphone. Okay, so I was trying to explain. Okay, thank you. I, I was trying to explain that this is one of the activities that we have created, yeah, to analyze better the context. So, can you go up in the previous slide, please? Well, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, the idea is that uh, you have different activities to work on the historical context, different activities to work uh, with more samples about difficult history, and you as teacher can choose what you want to go uh, what you want to use in class, yeah, because depending on the time you have or depending on the knowledge, historical knowledge of your student, probably you will change or you can do it longer or shorter. You can do a very short version or very long, long version of this step two. Because the step that the students like more, of course, is the step three, the research and creation of the documentary. This is the longest part of the project, but also is the most interesting for them, and most of it will be done out of school timing. Yeah, they will research, they will learn how to research and learn how to create documentaries and apply all this knowledge to their own documentary. When starting to this third step, they probably have some idea what difficult historical event they are going to research or who are they going to interview. But, uh, but in this first uh, part of the researching, they will probably have more ideas yeah, and decide exactly what they are going to do the documentary based on. Um, for doing this, we have organized uh, roles so that the groups of four, six will be organized in four roles, that one is the researcher, an interviewer, camera, and the editor. These are the four roles. But we have to study that all of them will be researchers. All of them will research together, and then once they have research and they know what they are going to do and who they are going to interview, they are going to share the other roles. And individually or in pairs, they will work in preparing the interview or editing the at the end or just filming the interview or filming the other images they have uh, they have think about. Okay, to do that, uh, there are lots of material that is prepared. You can see here in the right all the material that the students have in the student version. And uh, if you go far, if you go to the next slide, yes. In the next slide, we will have a sample of it. This is the researcher. The researcher, this one, the researcher will have, or the, uh, the editor, any role will have these three material. We have a role card explaining all the characteristics and the functions that the researcher has to do. 
also the function steps step by step is uh, clearly explained what, what and how do they have to do and also there is a fantastic tutorial prepared by the technician of VPRO to explain what a researcher should do, how they have to work on, and also the editor or the interviewer or the filming. Yeah, uh, I think we can uh, watch also just the beginning, the first minute of the researcher tutorial for you to understand what are we talking about. So you can see in the chat the link. You can uh, use the link that the student has written. Uh, watch the tutorial. Tab. And uh, take your time now, a couple of minutes to watch it. Okay, I hope you like the video. I think it's very interesting. I think it gives 
lots of information. And this video is longer than the part you have seen. So you can, uh, if you go and watch the other part, there is information how to search on internet and also how to write a good summary, uh, to be careful with the fake news, the copyright issues and all those things. Yeah. Well, once they have learned how to create a documentary and they have done this, they will share the documentaries with the teachers, with you, and you have to upload them to the YouTube in Europe School private channel. Don't worry because there is a fantastic tutorial also for you to learn how to upload the videos. You can see here different examples, different videos sent by schools during this piloting process about difficult history. You can watch them later on also. And in the next slide, we can go to the last step. Sharing and reflection. Of course, they have created a documentary and then they are going to watch them. Yeah, there is a possibility. Uh, first of all, they will watch the, the documentaries done by their colleagues and also the documentaries that are created by their European colleagues. And the second part of this, uh, part one, will be to have a discussion moment between all the students about the videos they have watched, the, the ones that they have created and the ones that the other group has created also. Yes, and to talk about the different perspectives or similar perspectives they had about the same uh, topic that in this case is difficult history. Yeah, this is one of the aims of the project, uh, so Jed has said in the beginning, to have this exchange, ideas exchange about the same topic, about topics that are interesting nowadays for them. And once they have this meeting, uh, if possible, online meeting. The last class part is the final reflection that will be individual or in groups about how each student or each group of students would deal now with difficult history. About after being working on that, say, through I, I I presume it's my turn, but I hope you can hear me because my audio was really bad. I couldn't hear Harry very well, but I will tell you something about the at-home tutorial. Uh, okay, good. Um, well, we spoke earlier on about uh, the subtitle of this project, History Caught in the Act, and you might say that we are all like history caught in the act by uh, uh, the corona crisis. Um, it, earlier in this winter time, we started a pilot period for this project and 50 European schools already worked together in this project to do the first two uh, programs, the one on difficult history, which Harry told you about a lot today, and the one on migration. And when they were in the midst of this pilot, Corona came through, so um, some schools had difficulties to finish it. So we immediately uh, uh, tried to help them out by creating an extra tutorial, the at-home tutorial. Um, the question is, how to make a good documentary if you can't leave the house? So in this documentary, we give tips and tricks from the makers of the series. And it's really a bonus track, it's an extra. Uh, on top of the other tutorials, and um, we will uh, hear the makers of the series and the makers of the other tutorials. Uh, as it was, uh, you saw Maren just in the research tutorial, so she will come back and, for example, tell you about a Create Reachers Only documentary. And there will be uh, the makers of the tutorials of interviewing, filming, and editing, giving good advices, like for example, as we do now, we Skype, we Adobe, we, we, we Zoom and click and we do everything, but it's not always technical so good. So uh, our DOP, our head of uh, camera tells you um, what you can do 
to help your main character find the right background, uh, make use of the best natural lighting, uh, uh, make sure you don't have annoying sounds and everything like that. And maybe uh, it's also nice to have some um, uh, uh, information on how you can make your interview, if you have to do it online, more vivid, more lively, by asking your main character, for example, if it's a migrant from another country, he might still have some uh, uh, stuff that he took back from his home country, uh, that he took uh, with him during the travels, and what, which is very important, or a photo of a family member, or topics that he can film as well, besides the interview, to give the whole a more meaningful uh, uh, um, picture. So, um, but also, uh, uh, our whole project, so, is really developed to use online, if necessary. But, of course, we do hope, if you join us in this program, and you want to start in September or October or November, that we all will be back in school. And we can do it as a normal school project. So, uh, our uh, whole setup of the whole programs are online as well as offline. So, if you are in class and you rather prefer paper, you can um, uh, just print the PDFs and hand them out in class. And if you are in a lockdown and you need to be at home or you want to work very online at school, uh, the student's version provides with a, a lot of online material for students, which they can watch on their mobile phone. Yes and uh, uh, on their uh, uh, laptops and everything. So it's two ways around. And what we saw in the Netherlands, and that would be maybe interesting for you as well to consider, we saw here in the Netherlands that a lot of schools do these uh, school trips for the seniors. So they go to Rome, they go to Berlin, they go to Paris, but they couldn't due to Corona. So there are some schools who want to use our project more dense, as a project week, and that is possible as well. And in that way, you can be online in contact with another school uh, and in contact all over Europe with several classes with several schools while being at home. So that's an, an, an another possibility. But of course, if we go to the next slide, I can say it's your turn because we do hope uh, and we do, don't hope the technical problems provide you from joining us. Uh, so, if we go to the next page, please. Um, yes, uh, we, uh, we will um, provide you the link again in the chat, the link where we, you can join and uh, subscribe. And if you do so, uh, we will provide you with, uh, so Euroclio and Vipro will search for you a real good European partner to match your school and the level of your students and your interests, and you both work so then on the same theme, like we have for the other teams coming up, climate change, gender equality, we have migration and difficult history, which we talked about today. If you have questions, do not uh, hesitate to write to me. My email is there, o2set at vpro.nl, all about TV making, all about this project, and Eurocleo, Alice, of course, and I think we have another poll to do, and you can write down in the in the link in the chat, and then we have a timeline also to tell you about. But maybe we should first do the poll, which was there. Oh. Wow, climate change is very popular. You're right. So, Stephen will take it over to finish up. Thank you so much, guys. Hope to see you in the project. Well, thank you very much, Odette, for uh, sharing these uh, results and also explaining about the latest tutorials that we've made. 
Um, I hope that these projects, that it gave you a good insight about um, like what we're trying to achieve with the, the project. So it is possible for all of you to uh, participate. Um, if you register, we will also help to match you with schools. So you don't have to worry about that. I know with eTwinning that you're quite used to find your own partner schools. And if you do have a partner school, you're very welcome uh, to join as well. Uh, but we have several uh, partner schools, especially from the Netherlands where the documentary is broadcasted. Um, so we're very keen to uh, see how students from different countries are looking to issues like climate change, difficult history, migration and um, gender uh, equality. So this is how it works if you register. Um, and yeah, Alexandra, she'll again put the, the link to register in the chat. Um, so after this, we will ask you, okay, what kind of uh, students are you working with? What is their age range? Uh, what topic is most interesting for you? And then we'll try to uh, make a good match. And then we have some suggestions on how you can introduce the projects, how the students can introduce themselves. Um, then uh, we have all the tutorials for, uh, for you available on interviewing, filming, editing, uploading. We hope that you also share the videos not only with your partner schools but also make them available on YouTube. Uh, you can already see um, a growing uh, collection on the YouTube channel and uh, that also enables us to see okay how are students uh, thinking about this in the coming years. So this is a project that we will um, start again in uh, like September there will be one group, in October there will be one group, in November. After that Euroclio will continue uh, to provide this, um, this project. So it, a time limit, that was one of the questions by Theodora, uh, to register our school. Well, it would be good if you um, will let us know uh, like in May, like at least uh, before the first half of June, if you want to be matched in uh, September and begin uh, the, the project. There were not a lot of uh, questions, but there was one question uh, that was asked by um, Murfet uh, about the Difficult Histories project. Uh, was question, okay, is it a very sensitive topic to teach uh, the students? Uh, well, yeah, the focus of that particular um, toolkit is indeed on difficult histories. We are very aware that Bosnia, uh, the Bosnia war, the Yugoslav wars uh, are sensitive. We actually worked a lot in the Balkans. And uh, the idea is also not to really tell the history how it really happened and to resolve those issues, but actually to show that it's very complex. If you watch the tutorial, uh, the starter clip for that, that topic, you can see that the people have a lot of debate about should we talk about it, should we not talk about it. And that's a dilemma uh, for Europe. That's the, the overarching theme of the TV documentaries that we are looking at issues that are challenging for uh, Europe in recent history. That's also why we focused on, for example, migration, which is another sensitive topic. Um, we don't want to shy away from those. We want to show that it's not only sensitive in one context and we want to see, okay, what do students come up with when they look at difficult histories in their own country? Um, and even if you, for example, uh, are looking at the different views, so you would interview people with different positions, different experiences related to these difficult histories, you get very interesting uh, documentary material. So, uh, of course, we shouldn't misrepresent, uh, but I don't think that if we avoid all the sensitive issues, uh, that it will be um, not uh, uniting. We have to deal with this difficult history in one way or another. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And uh, of course, we also want to work. Uh, I mean, you are mentioning, okay, we're, we're not, um, we shouldn't talk about it without knowledge. I think that is a very fair point. That is also why we're actually providing a lot of background information uh, to the difficult histories, uh, especially in the teacher material. You can see that there is, uh, we have the timeline, for example, 
um, and there are also there is more background information. Uh, we should definitely not mislead uh, the new generation in a way. The, you're mentioning, okay, we are not history professors, um, but in a way we, we have, then I would recommend you to also uh, partner perhaps with some of the history teachers. Um, of course, I'm biased because I work for the European Association of History Educators, so we're quite used to work with history educators. Um, but I think it's, um, yeah, you're definitely should look into the histories and I think also if you look at the YouTube channel and you see what the what the topics are that um, the, the were chosen by some of the schools they are uh, looking into uh, very difficult histories also from the Netherlands when it's for example by, about our um, colonial past so it's interesting for me to see what is insensitive in the different uh, uh, contracts. So I don't know if there is anything else that um, you would like to add, Hari, because you also worked on this uh, project. I'm also conscious about time. I don't think we should go uh, too much over time. Uh, but I would like to give the floor to you, Hari, perhaps to close up. Could, could I add something, maybe, also? Well, uh, yes, okay. I would like to say... Yes? Yeah, yes, I wanted to add only that, of course, it's a sensitive issue, but it's an issue that we should talk. And I'm talking from the Basque Country, so I know what sensitive issues and difficult histories are. Uh, but I think that uh, I think that we have to give the students opportunity to talk to talk about that, and to realize that there are different perspectives, and at least we have to listen to all the perspectives. Even it doesn't mean that you have to be to agree with all of them. So it's not as easy as climate change uh, probably to work in class, but in some cases and in some places, I think we have to do an extra work and work with this topic also. Yeah, so if I, if I may add some small thing that uh, in the tutorial, you saw a small part of the tutorial. Uh, in the tutorial, you saw a small part of the tutorial. In that tutorial, checks and balances, and uh, it's very important. Checks and balances, and, and uh, it's very important. Opinions and one learn from different opinions, and not only one side of a story. So that's really part of the learning process. Yeah. I, I think that's I think that has been a, a very valuable addition. So also when uh, when people are not history teachers, yeah, if you if you choose this topic, uh, difficult histories, you, you have to really uh, learn a bit about it. I think it's not only a learning uh, experience for students, but definitely also for the teachers. Well, Thank you very much for um, for joining again for all the time. It was great to see so many of you. Um, I think we're now wrapping up and I would like to give back the word to, to Alexandra and thank you very much for hosting us for all the technical support and uh, for giving us this platform to share uh, our project. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Odette. Thank you, Hari. Thank you also, Eugenie, for uh, the support. Uh, so for all of our learners, just to let you know that in the page of this online seminar, uh, I will soon post um, a document with all the links, with all the information that has been shared today, and also with the presentation. Uh, tomorrow or in a couple of days, we would also have the recording of this uh, online seminar, so you could all uh, share it also with your colleagues in case they did not have a possibility to attend. So thank you all very much. Uh, thank you uh, to our experts. You did an excellent job, despite all the technical challenges 
challenges we had today, uh, but this is uh, always a learning process, and uh, I think it was a very successful uh, learning uh, learning opportunity and excellent questions raised by participants as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.